Yeah, uh, the tags are excessive, but it's mostly so that my channel is kind of like a searchable, um, f like, thing for stuff. Alright, here are the chat bands, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Finals Game 1 of the DominantDemand.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament, number 59. Uh, this is going to be Paisable and Child Support, versus Clueless. It's going to be a best-of-three series, so you have to win two games to win it. So Paisable and Child Support has to win two, if they want to take the, if they want to take the series. Clueless has to win two. There's potential three games, so there you go. The chat bands were Timo, Lulu, Kasten, and Kha'Zix. Let me make sure they are posted over here. Let me talk about those bands for you real quick. Uh, I don't know, let, me, let me plug some things real quick. See this chat channel right here? If you guys want to be in that, once you go over here, once you click this bottom button, then once you click this button, which will then pop up this field, I want you to type in this word, I want you to hit enter, and then I want you to come over to here. And then I want you to go up here and click this button, it'll bring up this field, and then once you check these two boxes, and then you're done. That's what's up. And then you can hang out with us. Go see this watermelon or go home. There you go. Alright, so let's talk about those chat bands real quick that were uh, posted. Timo, Lulu, Cast, and Kha'Zix are the four chat bands. There are ten bands, that's the format that we use. Timo moves fast, blinds people, lots of spell damage, map control. Good. Ban him. Why? Because you can't stop the mushrooms, that's why. The thing is, most characters, if you kill them, it negates whatever they had. Um, for example, I hate Ezreal. I would, if I could delete Ezreal from the game, I would delete Ezreal from the game. I don't like Ezreal at all. But, if I, same with Soraka and Trindamir. There's probably like the three champions that I find to be the most goddamn annoying. Um, and if I wanted to get rid of them, I could just kill them in a game. Ezreal shows up, I could just tunnel vision and blow him up. And you know what? All the stuff that Ezreal does that I don't like, he can't do while he's dead. Teemo. If you kill Teemo, you can still turn around, walk over a mushroom, and die like an idiot. You can't just kill Teemo as an answer to killing Teemo. The only way to deal with Teemo is to ban him, or have a sweeper and walk at half speed so you can see the traps before the latency makes you run over them anyway. He has a blind, which is awesome. His damage is really high. Teemo's a great character, but he's annoying to deal with, so you can ban him. Lulu. Don't try and kill a character that Lulu's next to, because you can't burst it down. Lulu will just fix it up, CC you, slow you, and the thing that you were trying to kill is going to turn around and kill you instead. Lulu's also a fast character on top of that, so she's difficult. Cassidy, extreme mobility. He has a long duration silence, he has a slow, he can escape and chase infinitely. He's difficult to deal with without multiple staggered CCs. And lastly, Kha'Zix was the other chat ban. He can leap over walls and dominion that other people can't with his evolved leap. His single target damage is absolutely crazy. Some people in uh, on various internet communities like to point out that Kha'Zix's Q can do more damage than some characters' ultimates. And... <laughs> Dom nom nom nom. That's, that, that name makes me so happy, man. That's so cool. Nom 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 nom. That's great. Alright. Back to the, uh... Lobby bands now. Cassiopeia, Trundle, Elise, Jace, Nidley, and Kale. Cassiopeia, her AoE damage is good. Her sustained DPS is amazing. She has a stun that's a cone. She's killable, but... She likes to hang out in the back and just put poison everywhere and then stab you a lot with Twin Fang. Look, the game name is even Ban Cass, alright? That's how serious they are. Pro tip to people that watch the stream a lot. Look at the game name of the games for number one. And then number two, while I am casting, watch my mouse cursor. Because sometimes I will use it to point at things that are on the item builds or on the minimap or something that I can't actually dedicate, to, like, speech to because I'm too busy talking about something else. So... If you want to be a super high quality viewer, those are two things to look for. Trundle, extraordinary durability. That guy can delay, 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 and he can throw down real hard. That's really all there is to Trundle. Elise, spider everything. Stun has a. I remove myself from the map, become untargetable. She's tanky. 
lots of DPS. DPS stands for damage per second. It's a reference to the amount of damage you can deal per second. Uh, and over on the other side, Jace Nidalee Kale. Jace, good up close or far away. He has a shotgun. No, he doesn't have a shotgun. What does he even have? What would you call that? He has a hammer gun. He's like Dargo, okay? It's like that. His gun is a weapon. Somebody gets that, and they're really cool. He... If you get, if you try and get away from him, he shoots at you. If you get up close to him, he hits you with a baseball bat, and then shoots you. Everything ends with you getting blat, 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 and sent back to the summer platform. That's what the deal is with Jace. He also has really high mobility and is pretty durable on top of that. Nidalee, her poke is crazy. It's really strong. She has a heal which gives sustain to her team, and she's hard to catch because of her cat shenanigans. And lastly, Kale. Kale is a character whose damage gets pretty carried away late game. But she's pretty killable early game. Yeah, I think that about sums up Kale. Kale is a heal which helps her sustain. Her ultimate, I've never actually seen her ultimate be terribly consequential. Her ultimate usually gets used and the team fight still loses. I think only once or twice have I seen, like, the ult happen. And one of those was a Kale ulted a Pantheon the second that he landed in the middle of the enemy team, so all of the CC didn't do anything to him. Why Talon and not Zed? Well, Talon... Talon just does more damage than Zed. More consistently, I believe. There was a lot of Talon versus Zed arguing for a while, and I think it came down to Zed is good, but Talon's burstier and easier to deliver the damage. Alright, yeah, that's all I got for Kale. Her damage just gets carried away late game and she can really run the show. But, oftentimes it doesn't get there, but if it does, God help you. Uh, or whatever deity you believe in, or higher power, or science, or nothing. I'm not gonna discriminate like that. Look at the picks! Zyra, amazing! She can do a lot of damage, everything's an AoE, she zones like mad crazy, has an airborne, has a snare, has Jumanji, like, has a slow with the plants, has a gunshot with the plants, Everything's nuts about her. You have to watch out for that. Tom Cruise, help me. Exactly. Exactly. Lee Sin. Durable guy. Sustainable. He can chase. He's good. He has a gap creator with the dragon kick. Jarvan. Airborne. Spawns terrain. Has a slow. Good damage. All these guys are durable and delay. Like, look at this. Look at this. Zyra is like pure delay and setup. <gasps> what? Chobra! Hey, man. What's up, dude? Thanks for coming and checking out the stream. That's pretty cool. Alright, so... Diana, her damage is really high. She's good at bursting people down. Uh, Lee Sin is durable and can delay for a long time. Same with Chobra. And... Jarvan has an airborne and a... thing... Spawns terrain. And Eve, painkiller Eve, man. She will chip chop some people. Dude, open invite if you want to cast game two, man. You're you're totally allowed to elbow in. It's up to you though. If you're just chilling, that's cool. And uh her damage is great. She runs around and stuff like that. She goes she's great at ganking people. And her ultimate is just freaking scary, man. Just Plow! Throws that down on someone. She's stealthed. You reveal some people with a sweeper. Ah. Oh well. Well, hey, thanks for hanging out. You reveal some people with a sweeper. Evelyn drops her ult on them. The fight starts after that. Everything gets icky. It's pretty rough. Over on the other side, Talon. His burst is great. He has a silence on initiate, and he can stealth out of fights. Just Talon's kit is just flat good. There's not a lot else to say about it. If you see him once he comes in, then there you go. Uh, we have Wukong, which I'm sad that it got picked by that team, because Panzer's been trying to play Wukong since, like, DD27. Wukong has an airborne and an armor reduction. Both are really good. We have LeBlanc, who's able to throw down the snare and the silence. Amazing burst potential out of that, out of that champion. Amumu, who has all the AoE you'd ever want. He gets pretty spammy with Banish Toss if he has some CC, and the snare is great. Amumu's probably one of the best tanks in the game. He's at least one of the most banned, anyway. And then, lastly, with Wolfer on Fizz. Wolfer is a great Fizz player. I wonder what would happen if you banned his Fizz. What would he play instead?
Fizz does a lot of damage. Fizz is one of those champions that when I see a Fizz on the enemy team, I just buy something with an Negatron Cloak in it right away. Because Fizz is pretty scary. He has an Airborne. He's amazing gank. He's a slippery character because he has Playful Trickster. So it's a little rough. And it pretty much covers all the picks and bans. If anyone has any particular questions, uh, Airborne is easier for me to say than Knock Up. Uh, just the position that it puts my jaw in while I am speaking makes the word airborne a lot more favorable than saying knock up. I know that's a really weird answer, but that's all it comes down to. And if someone's asking about revive, revive gives you an increase in health. If you have the mastery for it, it gives you extra move speed, it cancels you being dead. It's the only counter to being dead in the game. So, there you go. The commentator, I'm Gandare of the Gaming Clan Vato Clan, and I am your commentator this evening. And if you like me and my stuff, by the way, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash VatoClan. Follow me on Twitter, at VatoClan. Follow the Twitch page, click the little follow button down there. And follow Dominate Dominion on Twitter, at Dominate Dom. We're going to go over to this game here in just a moment. I like the part where I left the summoner blockers up the entire time. Gosh, I'm so sorry, guys! Let's take over this game client right here. Ah, my loading circle. Come on, there we go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be finals game one of the DominateDominion.com League of Legends Dominion Tournament number 59. We're going to have Pays, Evelyn, Child Support versus Clueless here at this event. This is going to be a best of three series, so there's at least one more game after this. Maybe two. Percent hype for finals, man. Infeed playing as Diana, Carnival playing as Lee Sin, Panzer's playing as Jarvan IV, Dark Lord Booberry, a.k.a. Captain Booberry, a.k.a. Booberry, playing as Zyra, and Painkiller playing as Evelyn. Their powers combined form Team Pays Evelyn Child Support. On the other side, we have Half-Hearted playing as Talon, um, Kurao? Kurao. That's how I was told to pronounce it. Kurao playing as Wukong, Taeyun playing as LeBlanc, BB Pop playing as Mumu, and Wolfer playing as Fizz. They form Captain Pollution. Um, no, they don't, actually. They form Clueless. And that's going to be your finals game for today. I am one out of one of your casters today. I am Gander, and I'm talking to myself. At least that's what it looks like when other people walk into the room. So we'll go over to this loading screen here in just a moment. And uh, no CVs this game. Uh, clairvoyance is something that you start to see once in a while on a tournament day, you know. Uh, later on in the event, people start to use those one-per-team CV because they like to have that early vision before they can actually complete the Grezes and the Sweeper. So there you go. Look at these starting items here. Nothing looks too out of the ordinary. I love this Grezes first. You guys, you can go Grezes first. You have enough money for that. Just keep that in mind when you're playing. You, don't, you can sacrifice a person to get that right away, because you're not going to need those boots on one guy. Everyone else is going to be able to get there in time. It'll be okay. See Leeson over here on this side doing the same thing. Lots of boots, prospectors, items, nothing seeming too out of the ordinary right there. Everything's pretty good. Zyra's plant floating on midair. No, it went away. Oh, there we go. See? Floating on midair. That's science, man, and it's pretty scary. There's some physics there that I just don't understand, man. Over on this side, Wukong's whipping the stick back and forth. Wait for the game to get started. I like to follow the... If anyone in the chat, any of the mods, want to handle the uh, the new questions for people that show up and are like, Dude, who plays Dominion? And stuff like that. Politely answer the question. Because some people, they just don't know, man. Not everyone is a troll on the internet. Alright, so it looks like Taeyeon's going to be taken off first. Wukong's going to be picking up that middle point right there. You want someone who doesn't have poke, generally, to pick up the middle point. Two people here, that's going to give them slightly extra gold to their team at the very beginning. Because both of them are going to get a share of that. Moving up here to the top, there's a plant over the wall right there. See a lot of those little over the wall shots. Now, because people sort of know when people get there. Oh wow, you see Jarvan too, uh, Grez is first. Everyone wants to have that vision right away, they want to be able to see what's going on. Vision is the currency of choice here. 
Up at the top. Oh, Lee Sin safeguards out to Carnival. Gets a little bit of damage show right there. Painkiller taking some hurt. Half-hearted. Uh-oh. Half-hearted. First one to go down right there. Painkiller still alive. Just spamming that hate strike key. Making sure to get that damage out as best he can. But Painkiller, it looks like, is going to get taken. Oh, look. Painkiller still alive. Painkiller survival method right there. Taylor goes down. And uh, eventually, so does Evelyn. Zyra with the double kill is going to turn around and go back up to the windmill. Zyra is going to begin to capture on that right away. There's no one to contest it right now. Looks like they should be just fine for Paisal and Child Support to be able to pick that up. Are they going to get there in time? I don't think so. Taeyun, oh, just barely. Look at the sliver of health that was left on that tower to prevent it from being captured. That distortion at the last second being just enough time to stop Booberry from being able to get a hold of that. Oh, this, what? Did you see that? That reveal from that? Lighting up Painkiller right there. Amumu, immediate banish toss over. Locks down Painkiller. They turn around. They kill Lee Sin. Eve has to retreat from the fight. Her health is getting a little bit low, or at least she has to skirt around the edge of it. B Pop has activated the AoE percent damage right there. Taeyun taking Evelyn for a walk and might go down to Hate Spike. Oh, yep, Evelyn is going to pick up that kill. BB Pop chasing after Painkiller. Painkiller runs through Amumu to the opposite side, through the Zyra plants. Cataclysm shuts BB Pop down. Booberry is eventually able to help get control of this tower, and Pay's Evelyn Child Support is in control of the windmill right now. Down the bottom lane, Infeed having to deal with Wolfer and doesn't like any of that. Catches up, throws the Lunar Rush down, takes him out. Free kill right there. Not necessarily free. He did a little work for that. That wasn't that free. Blue Caster Minion, not quite strong enough, unfortunately. He expected to get the neutral, I think, there. But, unfortunately, he did not get it. Blue Caster Minion, not quite as strong, I guess, as Red Caster Minion. But I would totally dress up as a Blue Caster Minion. They have a very nice cape. Tan in the middle of the map. Evelyn, invisible. For right now, anyway. At least until somebody clicks on their Hextech Sweeper and finds a horrible, horrible surprise. LeBlanc gonna try and go for that Storm Shield right there. Karar finds Painkiller right there. And Painkiller gets all of the damage applied to him at once. And is sent back to the platform. Opting not, nope, doesn't, can't use that revive, does not have it available right now. So let's heading to the middle of the map, Carnival can see what's going on over there, he has that storm shield right now. Top of the map, a little bit of minions being beaten up. Storm shield proc. Booberry up at the top there, throws down the snare, doesn't connect with anyone, was hoping Wukong would walk into it, but did not connect, unfortunately. Tan taking some damage from Zyra's plants, and uh-oh, the bandage toss from BB Pop catches right there, Curse the Sad Mummy goes down, BB Pop taking some damage from the tower, um, Corral takes the airborne to the team, but unfortunately is defeated there, Panzer's barely alive, eventually falls, and now Defensive Garrison goes down on that top tower, half hard comes up, starts sweeping it up here, at the top point, Carnival by himself has to try and defend against all of this. Well, Painkiller might be able to... Yep, Painkiller cleans it up. Carnival by himself, and then suddenly Evelyn, and everything is going to be okay. Down the bottom lane, Infeed has destroyed Wolfer again. And it looks like he's going to go for the cap. Nope, he's not going to go for the cap. Sees that Wukong's alive, backs off away from that point. Those minions were going to beat him up. Something fierce if he hung around there for too long. Panzers wants some of that, but he's not going to go for it. The little bird right here should fly away when someone gets close, and that should tell you that a gank is going to happen. That would be a really cool mechanic. Middle of the map, a little bit of vision right there. BB Pop and Painkiller are having a disagreement of sorts over that part of the map. Staying stuck with that bandage toss. Zyra shows up to zone away a little bit. A little bit of Exchanging of stairs in the center of the map. A little vision, and that's about all. Both teams kind of looking for a place to catch their team. You don't want to stand around on a point for too long, idle, because that just gives the enemy team time to, like, build a plan. You want to stay in the jungle where people can't see you and make sure it's a game of incomplete information. Talon coming down for Wolfer right now. Well, which will help him anyway. And Infi was too far away. So yeah, he comes down, meets up with Wolfer. Infi's a little bit too far back. Panzers has to retreat from that. He was he was seen. You saw the little vision of the eye debuff above him. Safeguard over. And neither team has really found the location at which they want to engage yet. They keep having to turn attention to the top because someone gets out in the lane and starts attacking minions. And uh-oh, Booberry, this could be bad right here. Caught by the bandage toss. Instantly, Wukong comes in afterward and... 
they're able to pick up that kill on Zyra, and that makes the fight pretty lopsided. Zyra does not have a revive available. Oh, and the Cataclysm expended on Wukong down here, so they will not have that at the top if they decide to go for that engagement, but it does even it up to a 3v3. Leeson goes in, Dragon Kick or Distortion there to get Taeyeon out. I didn't quite see. Airborne goes off, and BB Pop getting low on health. Same with Talon. BB Pop trying to get away. Eve is a very fast champion, though. Gets in range for that. Oh, Lee Sin with the snipes there. Taking down a Mumu. And Painkiller uh, is going to check around the bottom part there. Trying to intercept anyone that tries to come up and interrupt, but isn't quite able to do so. Pandras with a great Demacian standard up there to take down LeBlanc. And goes in with the Airborne. Um, Corral. Gets hit right there, has the vision on him, so he can't decoy out, but he couldn't anyway because of the tower. So the tower reveals. Goes up to try and fight the minions, but he's really bad at minions. And then LeBlanc has a distortion, so everything turns out okay. Scariest recall ever. When there's Namumu right in front of your face. And feeding the bottom lane, things seem okay there. Storm shields are open, no one going for them yet. Red teams capture the drill. Looks like neither team is in a safe position to do it at the moment. Zyra's on the top point, we know she's there. It's really hard to attack a point when Azira is on it because of her ability to zone. Moving nearby. And down the bottom, Talon once again going down for uh, Wolfer to help him out against Infeed's Diana, but Diana not there. Waits around for a minute, sees Diana. Infeed, Infeed smells what the rock is cooking. She watches him, she walk over here, walk back in that little circle. That's sort of the I know what's going on. And Jarvan heads back up towards the upper part of the map. LeBlanc distortions up to try and put some damage on Zyra. And gets a little bit of damage in, but it was not enough to kill her. If they can keep that up, though, LeBlanc can really put the hurt on people. Panzers and Jarvan have discovered each other. And Carnival safeguards up to J4 to catch up. Oh, and dives in after BB Pop with the Shockwave. And he is barely able to escape there with only a little bit of hit points left. Diana comes up from the bottom, immediately engages on in the fight with the Crescent Strike, picks up a double kill, turns around to start going back to the lower part of the map. And right now, they don't really have an opportunity to make a play. Amumu could go for the drill and defend it, but they're in an okay position right now. Pays on Channel Support is in control of three points. They have been actively canceling with the enemy team on the map. And if you cancel, if you guys go for like 3 for 3, only one person alive on each side, and you can't make a play, then the team who has more points on the map has effectively won that engagement, because they're still ticking down health on the enemy Nexus, even though they didn't necessarily win, quote-unquote, the team fight, because the tower control is significantly more important than any of the team fights are. It's a very important thing to remember when you're playing Dominion. Taylor here trying to get pick up the Storm Shield, and nope. Lee Sin doesn't want it. Not gonna happen. LeBlanc gets chased away there. And uh-oh, Booberry with the silence and the rake. Taeyeon coming in from the back, helping to erase. Amumu picks up the kill on LeBlanc there. They turn their attention over to Painkiller now because they know that Painkiller is the next most dangerous person, and Wukong is able to pick up that kill. So that's a pretty straight-up exchange right there. Carnival by himself, Talon hanging around in the jungle here. It looks like Fizz was coming up to try and do something, but Infeed sees that and is going to attack the point to draw Fizz back down. Up at the top, Wukong is taken out. BB Pop and Half-Hearted here. Trying to do some work. Tan above the point. Doesn't have a lot of health, but has a lot of mana. And uh-oh. Jarvan is looking for it. Does not have the Cataclysm, but they don't need it. LeBlanc really didn't have a place to escape to, unfortunately. And that engagement, they didn't necessarily win it. Because Talon and Mumu are still alive. But since they have the tower control, things worked out well for them anyway. Because the enemy team still can't make that play. Infeed down here in the bottom lane. Mumu has an idea of where he's at, but doesn't know exactly... Saves the Banish Toss for a second to help Wolfer catch up. Ooh, great uh, dash out through the other side. And Painkiller, Windex time, cleaning up the bottom lane. Streak free shine, everyone. No one left down there, even Wukong getting taken out. Evelyn showing up and saying, hey, it looks a little dirty down here. And just wipes it down. Half Hard now has to defend the bottom point by himself, that looks like. Yep, he's going to go ahead and recall, it seems. Wukong has found it's a game of stealth champs. I like how Wukong comes up as a stealth champ when you search stealth champs. That always amused me because it lasts for a second. Defensive garrison goes off, which is going to help mitigate the capture from those stacked up minions there. If the AoE goes off by Fizz, but only catches Carnival, it looks like. And all five members of the team are sweeping up to this fight right now. Infeed is on the wrong side of the map to be able to try and do anything about the Boneyards. So that was a very safe five man engagement up there for them. 
They're sending Fizz back down around the bottom half of the map now, so that he can stop Infeed from going anywhere else. Top point, BB Pop is zoning Painkiller away so that Wukong and the Blanc can capture. And it looks like they're able to pick up that kill. Oh, the defensive garrison shuts that down entirely. Carnival immediately chasing in for Taeyeon, putting a lot of hurt on him right away. Zyra sniping off the kill with her AoE there and forcing them back a little bit. Half hard though, in the fight. Great snare by Amumu. Is really going to let that rake do work on the point. And now Carnival getting chipped down. The exhaust on him, really limiting his damage output there. He's going to get taken down. And Zyra with the shot, not quite able to kill BB Pop there. But BB Pop is going to have to retreat around the opposite side. Painkiller is going to clean up the minions before they can get the neutral, and BB Pop is going to have to retreat. That was a pretty close engagement for Pay Zeppelin Child Support there. They almost lost that point, but in the end, it worked out okay. Bottom lane, Wolfer and Infeed are having a discussion with Manatees, and Infeed seems to be on the uh, losing end of it, especially when Talon shows up and says, You're not allowed to talk anymore. Arguments are shut down pretty hard by the silence debuff. Looks like Amumu was just barely able to escape there before Painkiller arrived, and now Painkiller is going to get a free trip back to the summoner platform as a result of that. A lot of action down here in the bottom lane. Su Wukong and Lee Sin both hanging up to the upper side of the map, because anyone can go up there at any time, and they need to have a presence up here at the top end of the map if a big engagement starts going on down in the bottom. Now BB Pop doing a little bit of work on that plant right there. Zyra plants, not friendly. Not at all. Three man up here against Zyra. Zyra is like a champ and a half when she's on a point. And it looks like they don't want to mess with that at all. Instead, they're going to go down here for J4 with the bandage tossed down. They don't have any real way to connect and follow it up. Painkiller is catching BB Pop extended a little bit too far. Taylor firing off skill shots. How do they work? Painkiller is going to be able to get out of that okay. Lee Sin defending up top, making sure to clean up the minions from the point so they don't get any capture in on it. And Painkiller, is he going to be okay? We will see. Yes, just barely. They were able to take down Talon before he was able to get the last hits in on Painkiller. Now they're moving around towards the drill. Bandage Toss does not connect, unfortunately. And Corral in a pretty bad spot. Middle of the enemy team takes a lot of damage right there. The Airborne catches BB Pop. It looks like they're going to turn their attention to him and largely ignore LeBlanc because LeBlanc is not in a position where she can really deploy her damage at the moment. She does throw down a snare there on Panzer. So that's double snare on Panzers. Panzers get sent back to base. And now he's going to pursue Lee Sin as well. Are we going to see that ethereal chains? No, I'm not going to go for it. A little bit too far away to try and make connect. Looks like we're going to use that for Zyra instead. Will we see it? Oh, Leash is the plant by accident, it looks like. Did I see that correctly? Taeyeon really wants to kill Booberry there with the distortion up. Takes her down. Carnival low on health as well. Taeyeon going to help Talon pick up that kill. And they're going to move on up towards the top end of the map. Which will be Jarvan by himself on the tower, and the tower has not been lost in almost 10 minutes. Pay Zeppelin Child Support has been really in control of this so far, but with him being zoned away, they're finally going to lose that top point. It is going to get turned around to a full capture because they don't have anyone that can get up there to interrupt Wukong, and they have no globals they are going to be able to reach. So now, it's a little bit of a desperate situation, but they can... This is a significant amount of Nexus health. Look up here. It's almost a 400 Nexus health difference. That can be recovered. But it's going to be a very long uphill battle if they're going to be able to pull that off. We will have to see if it plays out the way they want it to. Infeed LeBlanc down here in the bottom lane throws that. That zones Diana away so she would not retreat in that direction, which enables Fizz to catch her over here. Either that or Fizz just missed, and I played it up. But you guys may never know. Carnival down here in the bottom lane. Going to AoE up these minions, soften them, start pushing it back the other way. Taeyeon's going to use that opportunity to recall. And Wolfer is going to get back down to the bottom. Zyra up at the top, great at pushing and clearing out minions and feeding them into the tower. That's one of the things that Zyra can do pretty well. Hey, birds watching too! Hey, shout out to like OG Dominion casters for hanging out today. Real cool to see y'all here. Uh, Half Hard gets boxed in by Panzers. Panzers is able to take him down. BB Pop comes up, lands the stun on Panzers, and helps keep him back away from anyone else. And BB Pop is going to have the upper hand. This Panzers is going to see that and dash away. They don't want to get into too big of a fight. Panzers can't deal with Amumu on his own. And with LeBlanc right there, too, that's also not good. Now, see, Panzers coming down here kites all of the enemy team away from the top. While Panzers went south for the bottom, he pulled LeBlanc and Amumu down from this position away from the point, which gives Amumu, or not Amumu, excuse me, gives Elisin a whole bunch of time to capture this point before Amumu gets here. 
he gets the neutral at least. Maybe not the full cap, but that was an awesome play up there. Amumu just now showing up, interrupting him. Point was neutral by Lee, and he was not able to get it back, unfortunately. But with Jarvan having dragged them so far away, that's what gave him the time to get that. If the fight had ended up there, Lee would have never been able to make that play for top. It just wouldn't have been able to happen. So that was pretty cool. Evelyn going for the Storm Shield. Storm Shield Evelyn is pretty scary. Seeing some pings go down. Oh, LeBlanc with the Storm Shield might be scarier than... You know what? Storm Shields are like... If you pick it up, you morph into fear. That's what happens. If I see someone with a Storm Shield, I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna deal with that. I'm just gonna wait for it to wear off or I'm gonna go somewhere else. Four-man mob hanging out in the middle of the map. It looks like Painkiller's gonna head down to the bottom and try and make that play for Fizz. Fizz is gonna kill Infeed down here, but Pain Painkiller clean it up. Shloop! Yep, takes him down. Send him back to base. B pop in the middle, lands the curse of sad mummy. Good snare right there. J4 is able to dash out and leash the snare from LeBlanc at the same time. So he does not get the double snare, and he's gonna have to retreat. He's gonna defend this point, it looks like. And Panzers does not have a garrison, though, so it's gonna be a little bit rough on him. He's not even able to get to LeBlanc right now, unfortunately. Oh, barely tried so hard to get to it. Stopped it just momentarily. They get the neutral on the point, though. And LeBlanc's just gonna stand back on channel. Nope, she'll break off and go to the fight. I'm completely wrong. Snare's a plant, because plants are awesome. And the bottom point was taken. Infant would manage to get the Boneyard away from Wolfer, so if they pick up this point, they're gonna be in a really good spot. Down here at the bottom, well, oh, Painkiller, excuse me, Painkiller, rather, after that gank where Infeed died, it looked like he swept over here, picked up the Boneyard, now they're in control of that. This pays them on child support with those three caps there. This puts them in a very good spot. All Painkiller has to do is delay down here for a while, make them overcommit to the bottom so they can easily take top, and there's two people down here in the bottom right now. So it's gonna be 2 1 down here in the bottom if Painkiller hangs out, to a really lopsided fight up here at the top. 3v2 for the moment until Amumu shows up. Defensive Garrison does go down. Is it going to be enough, however? Will he be able to hold on to this long enough for Talon to get here and try and make something work? There's the Curse of the Sad Mummy right there. BB Pop is doing every single thing he can to possibly extend this fight. Talon is going to show up at the point, but Talon is significantly more fragile than the rest of them, and he's fighting Zyra off the point. He does manage to get Zyra killed, but the point... He doesn't get the point. No neutral on the point either. That's very unfortunate. So now the point goes to pay someone child support, and now they just kind of have to sit on this for a moment. All they have to do is delay for a few seconds, there's nothing they can do. They can conceivably get this neutral in less than 10 Nexus health, if they sweep this fight really fast. But will it happen? Half hour just trying really hard to zone Lee away. Oh, defensive garrison, that's really unfortunate. That's going to seal the deal for the game. That buys time for J4 to get up here, and now they can't capture it. So Pay's Evelyn Child Support is going to take this first game, and they're going to go up 1-0 in this series as we move on to game two. Let's take a look at this post-game screen. Let you guys look at the builds and stuff like that. Aw, alright, later Chobra. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Should hit up the, uh, cast next time you're up super early. Real cool dude. If there's any articles about Dominion over there, man, in Korea, translate them. Send them our way. Ooh, that'd be cool. Alright, th thanks for hanging out, dude. It's good seeing you. Bye. Alright. Take a look at the items here. You can see only one garrison on each side. So they were really more focusing on the team fights than trying to hang out and fight those team fights. They were more emphasis on fighting the team fights rather than trying to hang out and fight those team fights on the point. There's a little bit of a delay before the uh, before the screen transitions. Is it, is it there now? I just know I started talking real fast. Let me know when it's there. Okay, cool. Yeah, sorry, I, I jumped into that a little quick. 
But one garrison on each side is gonna. That means the focus is gonna be more on team fights in other places, rather than having the focus on turtling up and defending points there. The the team that has if one team has a lot of garrisons and one has a lot of exhausts, the team with the exhausts is gonna win more fights in the jungle and off point, and the team with the garrisons is gonna win the fights on the points. There you go. Let's take a look at the damage because you guys really like to see damage dealt to champions. Blow Zyra. Twenty nine K. Now if you're wondering why a game that went on this long has twenty thousand less damage than another game that went on about this long. It's because there's a lot more durability going on in this one. People have a lot more armor, MR, defensive stats, and things like that that mitigate some of that damage dealt. So that's why it isn't as high as the other Zyra for about the same amount of game time. There you go. And let's take a look at Time Spent Dead. Bloop. Graveyard Hero, Zyra! Zyra, how do you get most damage and most dead? Dejekis or DJ Ekis, you are not the only one. I know of at least three more. All right, so let me kick over to a uh, commercial real here, real here, real here, quick for you guys. That sentence was awful, but you know what I mean. We'll be right back with Finals Game Two in just a moment. 